Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for tuning in for the second episode. We are about to unpause. I don't know if I don't know if we're all mentally prepared for this. Jack it up to full speed. No reason not to. Oh, by the way, you'll notice that that makes it so the score thing gets overlapped a little bit. Graphical glitch. Uh, the save file is going to be like that for the rest of the save file now. I don't I don't know why. That's just how the game works. I'm sure they'll fix it soon after launch. Let's unpause. Okay, we can already see our troops are moving to where they need to be. And again, we're allowed to declare on November 1st. It will be the first day that wars are allowed. Uh, there we go. Yeah, we can declare war, but we want to wait until our troops are in position first. So we'll wait. But we are going to declare war pretty fast here. Hold on. We got a few things here. <clears throat> the wars of the Diach... Dio... Diadochi. Sorry, sorry. The Wars of the Diadochi, which I believe is a Greek family. Having built the largest empire in the, the world has ever seen, Alexander the Great died suddenly ten years ago. With no clear successor to the empire, his generals, the Diadochi, there we go, or successors have fought over Alexander's spoils. Our ruler, Cassander of Macedon, is the son of of Antipater, who is the most senior of Alexander's generals and was given the honor to guard his heirs until they came of age. Upon the death of his father, Cassander killed his appointed regent with help from his father's enemies. He then proceeded to kill the heirs and their mothers. <laughs> Welcome to old-timey politics, everybody. Antogenes, Antogenes, probably, the former sterep of Phi... Hmm. Hmm. Phrygia? Phygia? Is perhaps the most successful of the successors. And Antogenes has also meddled with the Greek states and controls... Uh, and control the fortress of Chalcis that was once ours. But success breeds enemies, and now he stands alone and vulnerable. Okay, so let's, uh, you can see all of the people that they're talking about here. This is us, um, so we can see all the different places. Uh, thrice, by the way, we have an alliance with. Those are our neighbors to the east here, in, uh, right, right in here. But if we look right here, this is one of the harder countries to play as, apparently. They have a lot of enemies, although they are quite powerful. Uh, they're one of the more powerful people that we're going to be having to deal with. You can see the Greek down here. That is their leader. You'll notice that he is, of course, or uh, that that's uh, the Egyptians, but he is, of course, Greek, Greek is what I was trying to say, because these are all ruled by Greek right now. It's all the realms of Alexander the Great have split up. Greece, Thrace, Macedonia, Syria, Asia, Cilicia, F oh, Jesus, Phrygia. Assyria, Persis, Palestine, Mesopotamia, Lower and Upper Egypt. These claims will go away upon the death of our ruler. So we have claims in all of those areas uh, because of our inheritance. We'll likely not attack any of them right away. How old are we? We're 48. So who knows how long we're going to live? Okay. Uh, it looks like Thrice is also messaging us. That's th no, that's actually these guys. We're going to conquer them at some point, I think. Because don't they have an alliance with someone I want to conquer? Oh yeah, we're about to be at war with them. They have an alliance with the guys we're just about to declare war on. Uh, so what do they want from us? They want to import leather from us. This would make us lose a surplus of leather. They would gain their infantry defense and we'd gain a half a gold a month. I'm actually going to decline uh, because I'm sure someone else will want to purchase it from us that more rather that I'd rather give it to. All right. Keep playing the tra troops game position. Already, so many people messaging. Okay, they're both asking for uh, for iron, aren't they? Yeah, they're both asking for iron. For heavy infantry. Yeah, we're, as we're not currently exporting it, we would gain the following bonus of heavy infantry discipline. Right, right. That's how it works. And we would also gain some money. Uh, if we look here, though, where, where do they want to import from? They're importing from... Aetolia. Aetolia is, sorry, 
It's a little bit of a bitch looking through things sometimes. This is Atolia. We have one surplus. Uh, the surplus is giving us local manpower. 5% local manpower of just this one place is basically nothing because they have a manpower of one per turn. Uh, I, I guess they have a little bit more because each little city, but still, it's basically nothing. I'll agree to this. Uh, these guys are our allies. These guys are also our allies, but way weaker. So I'm going to give it to these guys. There we go. And I think I probably could have given it to both, but then I wouldn't have iron, so I'd rather not. Uh, so we'll give it to these allies because they're more powerful. They'll make better use. We'll get a lot of these early on, by the way. Uh, this is Egypt wanting to import grain from Macedonia. Um, I only need one surplus. Actually, I kind of want to keep two surplus. What would I get out of this? National manpower. Actually, you know what? The national manpower is worth it, and the money is good. We'll give some grain to the Egyptians. Okay, uh, they've already merged. Good. Uh, Thrice is asking for olives out of uh, what province? There really does need to be a better way to quickly check the provinces um, here. So we would lose our surplus. Our surplus gives local slave happiness, whereas I get more, I get the same amount, but with national slave happiness. Actually, slightly more, but with national if I trade it away because of the trade route uh, and good money, so I will accept. We don't use up any uh, civic power trading away, by the way. In fact, speaking of civic power, we can grab another thing now. So I will go ahead and grab... We're still making a lot more money off taxes, so I will I will take national tax. Landowners are every state's main source of revenue. By establishing a code of practice, we can avoid difficult situations when it comes to collection. So that'll increase our income. We're just going to wait for these extra little troops to get there. And he's getting a little bit of attrition there, but we'll be moving very soon. Okay, ready to declare. They've actually lost a cohort since the game started. Oh, they're broke. I think they decommissioned a cohort because they're so impoverished. Oof. Oh, no. I think they just decommissioned some, too. Oh, they're fucked. Okay, these guys actually have some money, weirdly enough. Yeah, so we're, we're also worth this guy. Or we will be. He's got the most cohorts, although he doesn't have much money. He is gaining money, though. But I'm not worried about them. Uh, it's time to declare this war, everybody. Get pumped. All right, call in all of our allies, gladly. I will trying to take Gracia, I believe it is pronounced. But I'm actually going to take everything. I don't, uh, aggressive expansion be damned. We're taking it all. If I can conquer all of this land, I'm going to. Declare war. Here we go. He has honored our military alliance. Okay. So uh, Thrace had an option to say no, although I believe they had lose stability for being an Oathbreaker or something. Uh, our vassals didn't have an option. They had to join the war. It was just confirmed that Thrace did agree to join the war. Um, we're going to kick the shit out of these guys. So there's their capital, and there is a fort there that we'll have to siege. So we're going to march right on their capital. Uh, it looks like they their capital's also got a fort. We're going to march right on that capital as well. We're just going to take out their coast right away. We are already blockading one of their ports here, which uh, keeps their ships from coming out unless they want to fight our much bigger navy. Our navy would just beat the hell out of them. And we can see already a uh, war score. Yes, we're getting just under three war score because we are blockading one of their ports, which is sometimes worth a lot, actually. Especially if you're going to be in a zone like this, if you're at war with both of these guys, you could be right there and block multiple ports, which is very nice. I could always split up my navy and block multiple ports that way, but honestly, I don't really feel the need. If any, if there's any port I want to block, actually, I kind of want to block that one. What's the size of this guy's navy? He has no ships. Okay, I'm actually going to split this and send the spare navy there to blockade that. So they're probably going to rush to build ships now. In fact, do they have wood? They have no wood. They'll have to drop their current trade route and uh, and get a new one. Yeah. 
if they want to build ships, that is, which is the only way they could fight us. Okay. Let's, uh, let's march. I will just select both of these so we can see their pathing as they go. Okay, they're already running away, we can see, because there's no fight symbol. Yeah, they've run away. All right, we're here. We're doing the siege. As you can see, it looks just like with Europe Universe Health 4. We start at negative 35%. Uh, there's a dice rolls you can see here. Every sie um, siege phase, there's dice rolls to see how well we do in terms of progressing in the siege. So right now there's a negative 35% chance that we would take the city that that uh, dice roll. So that'll take a little while. Siege tech is bad right now, as you can imagine at this tech level. Right as we arrive there, they trained a thousand troops. They're going to get slaughtered. It's just a thousand light infantry. They have no commander. They're doing shock and we're doing phalanx, so we have the advantage. They have almost no morale because they just got trained. So we're going to beat the hell out of them. Oh, there's pirates over there. I have to hope those pirates don't attack me, actually. That'd be quite bad. Um, I might actually want to pull away from that. Um, hmm. You know, I'm actually going to pull away from that. I don't want to risk the pirates attacking me. Okay, yeah, we took them out. During the struggle, none of our troops got killed. And we killed all 1,000. We stack wiped them because they had no morale. Or very, very low. Okay, just uh, take the boats, merge them together into one fleet again. So that the commander's commanding both. And we'll run the clock because they're trying to merge their troops together. And they're like scrambling to hire cohorts right now. Um, it'd be really nice if our people showed up right about now. If they actually started moving their asses and getting over here to attack. But they're, um, they're just not. They're being jerks. If I say attachment allowed, will they start moving? No, they just don't feel like it right now. Is Thrice at least moving their troops? Thrice is moving their troops at least. Okay. Um, they might be staying behind and playing defensive then. A child is born. Hey, a son has been born to us. I wish you could name him. Pharicles. I think that's how you pronounce that. Okay. I'm just, uh, we'll lower the speed by one. I'm keeping an eye on how many troops they're massing up here. And, uh, what kinds. They're using a lot of light infantry. They don't have iron, do they? Neither of them... Neither of them have iron or horses. So they're going to be using very basic troops. So they're already sieging a little bit of my lands here. But hopefully, my, my vassal here is going to walk over here and help me now. It doesn't even say he's in the war. Great. Uh, even though he's a tribal vassal of me. So fun. Okay. Uh, Thrice will take care of it for me. I'm not concerned. I might even not go over here and just peace out once I take all this land. Speech of a successor. As the ruler of one true, to the one true successor to the great empire of Alexander, Cassander steps up on the podium in front of our countrymen and court to deliver an inspiring speech. He brings up the many empowering properties of the old conqueror, but decides to bring up one topic in particular. So I can gain 100 military, 100 civic, 100 oratory, or 100 religious. I'm absolutely going to go 100 oratory. The reason why I did that, that brings us up past 150. We can right now fix our government. So morale of armies, that's going to be very nice. Um, we're going to take, and we can take two oratory. I want loyalty out of generals and admirals right off the bat. So I need to worry much less about their loyalty as it slowly ticks up. And the last one, I want to take... Uh, yeah, sanctioned privileges, get rid of corruption over time. So we got, that gave us the bonus. So we got two of extra, every monarch point uh, per month extra, which is huge. Uh, plus losing tyranny naturally over time. So we have corruption and tyranny naturally going down if we accumulate either. We have none right now. And national citizen happiness up by quite a bit, which will keep making sure that research and that commerce money is coming in. Okay, so they are, they're mostly mustering together some troops now. Mostly these guys, which we want to knock out of the game early. Uh, yeah, attrition because of supply limit. So I think what I might do is we are going to make some more people here. I'm going to throw together like just a slapdash army here. In the east, they'll march over and they're going to play defensive. 
five heavy infantry, which is a little steep early on. And four um, hippies? It's the Greek name. They're, they're like light cavalry. They're for skirmishing. I'm going to have the combo of those two, move them in, and they're going to play defensive because they're sieging a little bit of my land. It's hurting my war score, which is why we're in the negative. We're going to win this battle, though. Don't worry. Okay, we're already at zero on each. We've basically broken down defenses. And we're positive seven on this, so from now on, dice rolls have a chance of taking the city. Um, at this point in the game, though, we're likely not going to get that very high. You can see our unit construction over there as well. Oh, they were going to attack us for a second and decided otherwise. Hold on, what's this? Uh, these guys. Who are they in the world? They have some alliances... They have some local alliances. They're not very powerful. They're a tribe. And what do they want? They want to import leather from us. We would gain light infantry defense. We have very little light infantry, but the money is worth it. I'll take that trade route. Okay, they have a lot of trips up there. They might try and knock this one out. And if so, it's not the end of the world, but it's not nice. 21% over there now. Nice. Start massing them together. And here we go. They'll all mass up in in our capital. And we'll make a little army there. And then we'll start fighting this back. Starving populations in where? Right there. Well, they're getting sat on right now, so... That's probably part of it. it means the population is actively going down there, which is really a shame. Population's very important. We're 35 there. Good. We're getting close to what the max can be. I think it's like 42 is about the max this early in the game with... Pretty much no fort tech, but also pretty much no um, siege tech. All right, just need those two to move over, so we're at 9k there. Okay, hold on, we have some trades here. Okay, uh, they want a glass import from us. This will give us the following. Uh, well, that'll give us research points. That's very nice, actually. And what was it we're getting from having so much extra glass is commerce income. So we would we would lose one access, which would drop us by 5% on commerce income, but we get the 5% research points plus the actual money. Honestly, with how low our bonuses are for commerce income, I think this is a net gain of money plus research points. So I will gladly take that trade route. And with this one, this would decrease army maintenance cost and get us money. That's so nice. And we'd lose one wine, so we'd drop 1% happiness on local freeman happiness. Easy. Those are both great trade rates from us. So you can see we're getting a bombarded of trade rates, mostly because we have a, a, a lot of very diverse resources starting off as Macedon. So a lot of places want to trade with us. Um, I actually really like this one. So they want to attack us now. They're actually moving in some troops. It thinks that uh, it's unclear which side the battle win, which is what the yellow means there. But their side, they have less troops than us, lower quality troops than us. They're probably not going to use a good tactic for this fight either. I'm very confident that we will win that fight. In fact, I think these guys might be coming across a river there. If we go um, simple terrain, we're defending on farmland, which doesn't give us any advantage. Okay. I'm very confident we will win that fight. I'm surprised they're committing to that, actually. More trade routes. Uh, they want to import more glass. This would remove our surplus. That surplus bonus is not the biggest thing in the world. I might want the money more. Uh, this is move slave costs down if we accept it. But ah, uh, Sparta wants to import this. Um, to be honest, I don't really care about move slave cost. It's not the most important thing in the world, especially at this point in the game. And they want to take it from here. Our supply limit would still be pretty good. I'll take it for the money. Whereas this one, I think I'm actually going to refuse that. The religious tech investment's not huge right now, but the money makes it kind of worth it. Hmm. You know what? I'm actually going to take that. I'm going to use that money to develop our lands because we have almost no buildings at the start of the game. I could use some training camps and stuff. Okay, so they're hitting with equal numbers, but they're bringing in reinforcements. Okay, they have lower morale than us, though. 
And they're using a bad tactic for this. They're using shock, we're using phalanx, so we win the rock, paper, scissors there. We do have better quality troops overall. And um, our general's a little bit better than theirs. Military access, Thrace wants military access through us. Of course, I want them to be able to reach the enemies. Our army here is masked up. We'll give them a commander. We don't have anyone good, so we'll just pick someone loyal. Uh, we'll take this guy. And he's mostly just going to put the fear of God into our enemies here. I'm going to say attachments are allowed so that our allies in Thrace here start massing up with me and just death ball my way through. Okay, we're still winning that. Yeah, their morale is about to break, which is the green bar there. But they're getting reinforcements. They might beat us in that fight, actually, uh, if they have more people come in. Whereas we might be about to take that city. Then we can... Ah, yeah, it doesn't go up past 42. So we just need a good dice roll. Okay, so they've won that fight, basically. Um, nothing we can really do there. Yeah, and they've come in with the bottleneck strategy. Okay, they're, they're about to win that fight. I actually don't... Ah, I will jump in on that to help on Siege. And also just a map up. Yeah, we were defeated. Okay, so they're retreating back to friendly lands. That's okay. We'll mass up with this army, maybe. Again, I don't want to mass up a giant death stack because attrition would get really bad. Uh, but we'll see what we can do. Come on, take the city. Damn. Still haven't taken it. Okay. Okay, we're unseaging this land now, which is nice. Okay, they're marching straight down to deal with this. Okay. Shimmy with these mountains or else I'd walk right over and reinforce that. Okay, we've unseaged that. That's nice. Hey, Thrace, you want to, like, actually attach to me? I don't believe I can individually order them, unfortunately. At least as far as I know. If I go to the military tree... No, st just stats and traditions. Okay. Right, and uh, you can phalanx. You're really good at phalanx. He's he, pretty much all of his troops specialize in phalanx, so. Okay, yeah, they're moving a lot. Oh, no, they're starting to move some of their people back up north. I think they've realized that uh, I've really moved a lot of people up here. Okay, unseage this land. I'll gladly unseage a bunch of this, lower their war score. Okay, they've massed that together. They're going to be taking some attrition for that, though. These guys are still retreating farther. That's a pain. Lost sight on some of them. Some snuck through down there. They're going after a capital, actually. Um, oh, but those guys are going down there. They'll probably deal with it. I'll stay here, then. I just need a lucky dice roll on this. Where is our uh, retreating army? They're still right there. Okay, they're going all the way back to the capital. That's a pain. Yeah. Can't take new orders yet. Can I go shift and tell them? No. Okay. Come on. Oh, I've lost three almost 50% dice rolls. That's rough. Okay, we've unsieged that. Mmm, they took a slave and a pop died after that siege. That sucks. It'd be really, really nice... Uh, let, oh, we can take an invention. It'd be really nice if the other guys actually masked up with me, like I'm telling them to. Um, I would like... What's our commerce? Our commerce is healthy. I think now is when I'll take the morale recovery. Hmm... I'm going to wait here for uh, these guys to arrive. Okay, yeah, they're coming. This will give us quite the stack. Uh, we're not currently exporting. This give us Freeman pro uh, promotion costs, which I don't really care about much right now. Livestock from a miner. Okay, yeah, I'll take that for the money. And we're making a lot of money again, so I think I will muster up another four cohorts worth of light cavalry. I really dig light cavalry. So they're walking over there. They're actually going to run into them. Because they're already marching down there, so I'll march with them. In fact, I'm going to attach my unit to theirs so that they can death stack and walk around. There we go. We won the big siege, captured a population, distributed them as a slave. And because it's a castle, or fort rather, all the, uh, the uh, 
adjacent counties are going to start getting taken over by me. Now, for the sake of travel speed, I'm going to get on my boats. Ooh. Petitioner approaches. A bepimpled youth by the names of uh, by the name of Philip the Fourth isn't that one of our brothers or something? He's a primary heir of my family. Yeah, uh, approached our basilis in a pri in private this morning. In a hushed voice, he spoke of a vision of the near future, in which he was found by his loved ones having been burnt at the stake. With shaking hands, he offered all his worldly goods to the state in return for our protection. We can take 121 gold, which is a lot. Or oratory power. Uh, I actually want the gold more right now to fund the war. So we'll take the gold. Oh, we're getting in a small naval skirmish here. Did they finally make get, get any wood? No. No, they didn't. They still have no ships. Okay. Just seeing if they were going to participate at all yet. I could go knock them out of the war right now. Just drop off some troops on them. Oh, they have 16 cohorts, though. I'd actually need a proper army over there. Okay. This naval battle, though, we're going to win. We have them beat 4-1. to one. Oh, they're marching right on the capital right now. Okay. Um, they are probably going to win that fight. Yeah, our morale is not full. They have better numbers. We have phalanx, which is nice, but I don't think we're winning that fight. And I can't run away in time, can I? No, they did reach them before me. Okay. That sucks. You guys want to, like, march over here and put the fear of God into them? That'd be really nice. I'm going to actually detach. And chase them down. Right to the capital. Right now, I'm just kind of trying to waste their time a bit. Obviously, I want to get the advantage, but, you know. Okay, Victorious, that was in the fleet battle. Didn't lose a single ship. All right. And we're going to just send the... Oh, did you not arrive yet? Oh, they didn't get on the boats yet because of the naval battle. Okay, our guys aren't going to arrive in time to save this fight, probably, but they're going to hit these guys before they run away, at least. Okay, have all those troops start moving in. Come on, arrive on there. There we go. Beautiful. Okay, this war is actually taking a little bit longer than I expected. They're they're being a little bit wily. There we go. The reinforcements are arriving there in time. Okay, we're actually going to win that fight. Not without significant losses, but we'll win. Victorious. Merge it all together under our leader. There we go. It's, uh, that's a grand total of, what is that, um... 24 plus uh, 4, 25. We have, we have 25 cohorts there. We're probably going to split that at some point. They're just reinforcing. Where are you moving to? You're, you know what? I'm going to stay on the capital right now as they reinforce a little bit. We've arrived there and we're marching on their capital right up there to start, uh, start sieging that down as well. Okay, I like that. Let's play a little bit defensive. We've got them walking around as well to hopefully stifle reinforcements. 38 cohorts. We're pretty heavy on cohorts right now, but we can afford it. Manpower is going to start taking a little bit of a hit, though. Training up four uh, light infantry there to merge as well. Uh, ooh, what is this? Threat successful. What is this? Some powers over in India. Ah. That huge empire in India just threatened a regional power, saying, give us the land or we go to war. Okay. Okay, we've started sieging that. Good. And, yes, we're also blockading one of their ports. Nice. That actually puts us a positive war score, despite uh, them sieging a bit of our land here and winning a few big battles. Okay, they're trying to mass troops together. They actually have quite the death stack there to the point that they're probably taking heavy attrition. It's too many troops in one section for the development of this land this early in the game. Okay, we're massing together this light infantry. What is this? They're trying to sue for peace. I'm actually going to just not even read what they're offering because there's no way it's going to be worth it. Because I want to take all these countries. Just one huge coup. 
Nice. Our dudes are hitting a couple thousand there. That's uh, thrice knocking some guys out of this war easy. Here we go. We have a lot of guys masked up there. This is beautiful. Phalanx position, yep. Yeah. So what is the uh, best path to hit them? Where are they going to? They're going here? Yes, they're, they're going there to try and reinforce that. I'm gonna march right on them. Uh, don't know if we'll reach in time, we'll see. They have a lot of morale, they can probably hold out. Uh, if we pull this off though, we're going to pretty much seal the fate of their army and really just beat the hell out of them. They've been trying to be evasive with their greater numbers, but yeah. Oh no, they might run for it. Okay, hold on, our allies lost that fight, but we've got severe numbers on them. Okay, are they already locked into their movement? They're locked into their movement, so I'll just wait for them to come to me then. Let's play defensive. Is this a mountain? This is planes. Okay. We'll play defensive, though. Let them come to us. We're a phalanx. There we go. We have great numbers on them. They're entirely light infantry. That is fascinating. They're bottlenecking. Bottlenecking have an advantage with light infantry? Uh, uh, barely. It barely has an advantage with light infantry. Why are they doing that? Why would they bottleneck? I want to learn why they would do that. Surely they could do a better thing than that. Yeah, skirmishing. Why didn't they skirmish? Skirmish is not weak against Phalanx, and it gives a way bigger, a four times bigger bonus for Light Infantry. Alright. They must have only been able to afford cheap units, so they went all Light Infantry. I don't know why they're trying a bottleneck. It's not good against Phalanx, it's just equal. Well, we've got great numbers on them, we have better quality troop. Uh, do we have a better commander? Oh, they actually have a very good commander. Uh, we have a worse commander, but not by a ton. I'm surprised our morale isn't doing better than it is in comparison to theirs right now. Um, they are still training up more troops over there in some of the unoccupied land, but we're winning this fight. They're getting some good dice rolls. Good on them for that. And they're still sieging places. They're getting work done. We just got reinforcements from Thrice there, though, so that pretty much seals their fate. There we go. That's a huge victory right there. That really drained their manpower. Okay. We're going to go up here. Let's knock out their other little group. And we'll leave Thrice. Thrice is pretty beaten up, actually. They're mostly in retreat. I want to leave Thrice to mostly unsiege our land. Siege one. There we go. We took a slave, and it's going to take all the nearby counties, which is almost every county of this country. Wow. That is really going to stomp them to hell. If we occupy all of their land, by the way, and then wait for them to retreat to us when they've lost a fight, they'll get stack wiped and lose the entire army. That's tempting. They only have two counties that aren't going to get taken by this fort. Let's knock these guys out of the war right now. And I'm actually going to... Well, they don't have enough troops there to retake that fort, so they could unsiege these places, but it would get resieged as soon as they leave. So maybe I'll blockade these guys for now. Just finding creative uses, you know? Right, I also forgot these guys. Are they even in the war? No, right, because they're tribal vessels. They're just paying money. Those pirates are still there. I'm just worried about an egg growing to me, you know? I'll move back over here. Siege that down. Boom. Massive siege. And as soon as we got all that siege, everyone wants to trade with us. Okay, hold on, hold on. Let's check these out. Okay. Wow, there's a lot. Okay. Uh, Rare has to import vegetables uh, from one of our places. We wouldn't lose any bonus, would we? Okay, well, hold on to this one. We would gain happiness uh, out of importing fish. 
Now, the more fish I have, the more population growth, but it's not like it's grain where it's a huge amount. So I'll say yes. Um, how many veggies do I want to give away? They're all asking from the capital. Oh, they all want veggies. I can't give veggies to all of them. I'd lose my supply limit, wouldn't I? Because we're just trading this in. Oh no, I, I misread where they're trying to get it from. Never mind. They're trying to get it from down here. No, it's uh here? What province is that? This one. I'm willing to give away one. They're all paying the same, so we'll give it to them. There we go. Alright. White Peace imminent. Uh, White Peace may be in force as we failed to challenge the occupation of the war goal. Uh, so is saying that at this level of war wariness, essentially, it could get challenged. However, it can't actually because the war goal is being contested right now. Uh, the war goal was a county that we already have the capital of, so it can't actually get peace out of. Uh, or am I wrong? Province of uh, Gracia, isn't that this? Yeah, we, we control the capital of that. We're good. Yeah, we uh, it's contested. We're good. The Olympic Games. Once more, the renowned Olympic Games are due to occur in the city of Olympia. The traditions surrounding these games are ancient, reputedly dating back to the days of mighty Heracles himself. And they are an occasion in which all Greek rejoice. It is our custom to send the proudest, most able young of Macedon to compete on our behalf. We believe that we have found two ideal candidates, the well-muscled brood of a man by the name of Periplis and a stout fellow who calls himself Antipater. Which of these uh, fine athletes will you send to the games? Um, one is a governor, the other is the son of someone. Um... I assume martial skill would probably matter here, so we'll send this guy. He's a governor, so we'll have to get a new governor, but that's fine. So we sent him off, and now uh, this place lacks a governor. Uh, our next best guy is Antipater. He's reasonably loyal. There you go. Okay. I think this is a good ending point for the second episode, though, and the last episode before I start live streaming this. Again, all the live streams will be uploaded here on YouTube in the playlist in the description, so you aren't going to miss anything if you don't watch the live streams. However, if you're watching this live, uh, I, I appreciate that. If, if you're watching, uh, if you're watching this day of, that is to say, then you can go to the Twitch TV page and watch this live over there and participate and get to see the conclusion of this great war. Until next time, have a nice day.